Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Campbell from mrcampbellrocks.com and this is an updated Google Meet tutorial as of May 6, 2020. There's a lot that's happened in the past two months surrounding Google Meet with extensions and uh, Google updating a lot of things in Google Meet. So I wanted to give a and put together a new tutorial for those of you that are not familiar with Google Meet. If you're an educator and you're here just brushing up on stuff, that's awesome. But most of you here are probably not educators. So I wanna give you a run through on how to start a meeting, end a meeting, add extensions, what those extensions do, how you can share out a Google Meet. So let's get started. So there are four ways to get to a Google Meet or to start a Google Meet. The first is to go to meet.google.com right here, and you'll click on join or start a meeting. Then you can name the meeting. Then you hit continue. Before you go into the meeting, everything's gonna ask you to get set up. So you have some volume controls here. You can mute yourself. You have camera controls here. You can hide your camera turn it off. Over here before you join in, you can click on settings. You can turn on the captions. You can pick a different camera or change your video to be a little bit more clear with 720. So I'm going to change that right now. Click done. There's an extension at this point, which I will show below that you can actually create waiting rooms for people or attendees coming into the meeting. Once you're done with all of your settings, you click on join now. Now you're in a Google Meet. Some of the things that you see on my screen are gonna be extra extensions that we'll talk about later. So I'm gonna mute myself now, but this is a Google Meet. You can see that we get the Google Meet information here. So we can send this out via text message. People can dial in and have a specific pin. If we want to add attachments, we can do that. We do that when we're actually creating a Google Meet invite through Google Calendar, which I'll show you in just a minute. Whiteboard is another extension that you can add on to have a whiteboard natively in present mode when you present to people in the Google Meet. You can turn on captions and turn off captions here. There is also a extension that will record these captions and put them in a transcript for you. That is called Tactic. When you are presenting, you have multiple options to present. And this is where a lot of the updates have come in, is you can present an entire screen, you can present a specific window, or you can present a specific tab. If you're gonna share something with audio and video, I recommend, and the best way to do that is with a Chrome tab because that allows you to play audio and video in that. So let's do that now. When I click on a Chrome tab, it's going to pull up the tabs that I have here. Now I have a t tab here from Mocha Beans, who is a graffiti artist that I like, and we're going to share that screen here. And you'll notice I jumped over to a new tab and a little pop-up came up over here said, you're presenting to everybody in Chrome. When I click on play, this video will now play for everybody in the meeting. We won't watch a lot of this, but he is a great uh, graffiti artist and he sells some of his paintings online. So we'll pause that. I'm going to close that window. We'll go back to our Google Meet. You also have down here more options, display options on how you see members or participants in your Google Meet. So when you click on these three little dots right down here, it's going to give you some layout options, the option to record a meeting. When we click on record a meeting, it's gonna ask for everybody's consent. You wanna make sure that you have that before you record that meeting. That meeting will be saved in your Google Drive account. When you change layout, you have multiple options. You can do a sidebar option. You can do a spotlight option. You can be a, you can click on the tiled or grid view option. With Google, they only allow you to have 16 people in that tiled view. If you want to see more than 16, I highly recommend the grid view Google extension, which the tutorial is below. It will allow you to have up to 40 or 50 people, at least from what I've seen with our school and what we're using Google Meet for. Again, when I go back to settings, we can turn on the captions. We can adjust information here. You'll notice up here that we have these boxes. This is the grid view extension that I was speaking of um, earlier. 
This will tell you who's in the meeting here. It also is connected with a uh, attendance extension. So you can take attendance for everybody that was in that meeting with this little click here. And that extension is here. What you'll also be able to do is you'll be able to have a chat on the side here. Google records all of this chat and it comes to you in a transcript outside or connected in a Google document when you're finished with the video. There's two possible transcriptions. There's the transcription of your chat, then there's the closed caption transcription and that you would have to use a extension called Tactic. What you see over here is another extension called Nod. What this does is this allows users that have this plugged in to give emoji reactions or to respond to questions from the presenter. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yep, I can click the thumbs up and it will show you down here what the attendees have selected so you can take a quick count of the vote. That extension is being updated regularly and they're adding new emojis to this software or to Google Meet. Again, this is Google Meet in a nutshell. Now let's talk about some other ways that you can start a Google Meet. If I'm in my Google Calendar and I want to start a new event, I would add all of my guests to the Google Meet. And what you'll see right here is add Google Meet video conferencing. If I click on more options, as we stated earlier, you can upload or attach documents. So when I go down to the description of the meeting, you'll notice that all of the Google Meet information is right here. I've got the organizer here and I've got the attendees or the invitees here. If I click on attach, what it's going to ask me is if do I want to grab something from my drive? Do I want to grab a recent document that I've worked on, a shared drive, or do I want to upload something from my desktop? When I upload that information, it'll automatically be put in my Google Drive and shared with all of the attendees in my Google Drive. So let's say I click on this document and select, select. I click save. I click send. I'm going to invite external guests because it's outside of my organization and I spelled it wrong on purpose. It'll give them information to that file. Now when I click on the event right here and I go to join with Google Meet, this is what your invitees are going to see. We'll close this other meet over here. You'll see this is the screen that we saw before. I'm going to mute myself join now and you'll see we have a little paper clip down here with meeting details when i click on meeting details i'll see one attachment i click on attachment and there's the attachment that i just attached to this google meet meeting and everybody that's invited all of the participants of this google meet will have access to that document The other way that we can invite is just updated yesterday is through Gmail. If I am in my inbox in Gmail, obviously I'm zoomed in and I scroll all the way down, it says start a meeting. When I click on start a meeting, you're familiar with this. It's going to pull up this information where I can now start a meeting. I'm not going to start it because you already know how to do this. So we'll close that. We'll close our calendar. The last way, if you're an educator, I'll go over this briefly, is you can now connect through Google Classroom. And this meet right here is sent out to your classroom. It's the same link for the classroom unless you change it or refresh it. When I click on this, you know exactly what it's going to do. It's going to open up a Google Meet where I have my settings and all of that information that we've talked about earlier. Now, let's jump into some of the Chrome extensions. Grid View is one that we talked about here. There are five or six really important Chrome Google extensions that I use with Google Meet. One is Google Meet Grid View. If you ever have a meeting with more than 16 people, you're going to want to install that one. Google Meet Push to Talk. If you're familiar with Zoom or Team Meetings, it will allow you to just speak when you hit the space bar so you don't have to unmute and mute yourself or unmute yourself and forget to mute yourself back in again. So you can just hit the space bar to do that. 
There's Google Meet Classroom extension. This gives you the ability to have a whiteboard in Google Meet so you can be doing math problems or writing notes on that uh, whiteboard while you're having or presenting to other people. Google Nod is one that gives you emoji interactions. These will all be listed below. There's Google Attendance, which allows you to take attendance of everybody's in the meeting. It spits all of that information or outputs all that information on a Google Doc that you can review later to see who was in that meeting. I wanna tell you how much I appreciate that you're here, that you're working through this situation. If this brought you value, saved you time, energy, and frustration, I would love for you to subscribe and share it with people in your building, in your office, with people that you work with. Again, I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here.